Hi doctor, I've been having a lot of knee pain. Okay, how long has it been going on? It's been going on for a few months now, but I feel like it's been getting worse over the last few weeks. Well, let's take a look at that knee. We'll need to examine it first before I can make any recommendations. Your knee looks normal, but it is swollen. Is it though, or is that just your knee? So it says here that your BMI is above 30, and you know, anything above 30 we consider as obesity. Any extra pound on your body is actually 10 extra pounds on your joints. So with a little bit of weight loss, I suspect that you will have much less pain. Okay. Okay, good luck. Follow up with me in a few weeks if you're not improved. <sighs> I'm never going back there. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Jenny Lay. I'm a family medicine physician and a mom of two. And have you guys ever felt like you went to the doctor and they were just not listening to you and they were just blaming everything on your weight? Well today I'm gonna to talk to you about some of the strategies that you can use to help your doctor listen and to actually hear your complaints. And secondly, I want to talk to the doctors, the doctors in training, and the medical students, how we can be better communicators and educators to our patients. And so if you guys are interested, then keep on watching. So let's first off by talking to you as patients. When you go in to see the doctor, I know it may sound scary because there's this potential power dynamic, but how I practice medicine is I think of medical and your medical health as a teamwork and the only way that we are successful is that we have trust and open communication and so if you feel that your doctor is not listening or even before they have a potential to not listening just go ahead and tell them your past experiences your past traumas of what you went through in this medical system you can tell them that you know hey i've had this bad experiences with other doctors in the past and that they've always blamed my ailments on my weight and I felt like my symptoms were not fully worked up and I didn't get adequate care or delayed care because of this. So putting that out in the open and communicating that with them and telling the doctor that this is your fear will help the doctor understand where you're coming from and that they will be able to better communicate with you or be more thorough in their other aspects. Speaking to you as a doctor, it is never our intention to put you down, to hurt your feelings, or to brush you off in any sort of way. I know that a lot of us doctors do not learn how to communicate or do not learn how to teach or lead properly in medical training and and that is what practice is about. It's about the art of practicing medicine and I hope that we have the opportunity to learn together. And so I know it may feel really, really awkward, but putting it out there and just saying it up front um, is better for both the relationship, you and the physician. If the doctor continues to be dismissive, then that person is probably not gonna be the right fit for you, and that's okay. Um, my suggestion is asking if you can see another provider, say, within the same clinic. Usually, if your insurance company pays for that particular physician, they should cover the other physicians within the clinic as well. Not everybody practices medicine the same, and I know it's very difficult based on like availability and location and transportation um, and all that stuff but that might be another way if you are not jiving or getting along with your current primary care provider or doctor in general. Next, I would highly recommend seeing the doctor with just one or two problems at a time and why I say this is because in order for us to adequately ask a thorough history to fully understand like your past and all the things that you've been through and all the things that you've tried and do a thorough exam and then have enough time for education and counseling, it takes more than 10 minutes. And so if you're scheduled for a 30 minute block, say your appointment as is at one o'clock, 
show up a little bit earlier, say at 1245, so you're able to check in, and then the nurse or the MA will check you into your appointment. So right at one o'clock, you are able to see the doctor. Um, on my schedule, I see patients every 30 minutes. So 1 o'clock to 1.30, the next patient is scheduled from 1.30 to 2 o'clock, 2 to 2.30, 2.30 to 3, uh, so on and so forth. And so if you show up at 1 o'clock and then the MA has to check you in, the front desk has to check you in, we take your vitals and all that stuff, by the time I actually come and see you, 10 minutes, 15 minutes later, you're only scheduled for 15 minutes left. Um, and that is really not enough time for me to talk to you about all the things that you want to talk about. And so that's just some tips that I would recommend. I know it's really hard for people to take the time off. Um, doctors now are also doing virtual visits, so always ask if that is available to you if you feel more comfortable with that. Now I want to talk to all the providers, the doctors, the MPs, the PAs, the med students, the residents, and everyone in between who is taking care of patients. I want to talk to you directly on how you can improve patient care and patient outcomes. And the first thing is understanding and acknowledging our own implicit bias. For those of you who don't know what implicit bias is, implicit bias is our own subconscious, not intentional, subconscious biases that affect our decisions day to day. And so if you haven't already, I highly recommend taking the Harvard Implicit Bias Test. It shows you um, some of your own biases and gives you further understanding of how you view the world. There was also a study performed amongst oncologists who were determining implicit bias and how that had affected patient outcomes. And they found that those oncologists who were biased against a certain group of people, those group of people tend to have worse patient outcomes due to the fact that they did not follow through with the recommendations or they just did not trust the doctor to follow through with those recommendations. There was delay of care and so it's really important for us to be able to communicate with patients what we are actually thinking, why we are coming up with a certain diagnosis in order for them to follow through with these plans. There was another survey that showed the birth control option that patients more likely will stick to is the one that they personally choose. And so we as doctors are not here to make decisions for patients. We are here to just give the most up-to-date evidence-based medicine that is available and they then make the decisions for themselves and what's best for their own bodies and their own families. So if you haven't already, I will link a video that I talked about implicit bias, and then I will also link the Harvard implicit bias test so that you can check that out on your own. So I'd love to hear from you guys, both patients and providers, what are some tips that you would say could help develop a relationship, a better relationship where both of us listen to each other because all too often I feel like there's a disconnect between patients and their providers and we ultimately lead to worse patient outcomes. So for patients, how do you feel that your doctor should address you or how should we better communicate with you? What are some of your concerns? What are some things that you want to change that just want to see doctors change? And then at the same time, as providers, what are some tips that help you become better communicators? So if you made it this far, please give this video a thumbs up so it helps us with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe, join the family. We make new videos at least once a week and we do Medical Mondays where we answer all your medical and non-medical related questions. And I'll see you guys again next time. Peace.